Now then, uh, parents uh, do all they can uh, to keep uh, their children safe from harm, but today new uh, scientific research reveals the worrying amount of bacteria that can be lurking on their baby's dummy. Analysis by the Queen Mary University of London Laboratory has discovered that 9 in 10 may be contaminated with harmful bacteria, and a fifth of those they studied were found to be grossly or heavily contaminated with a mixture of skin and fecal bacteria. Well, here to discuss this further, we're joined by Dr. Ronald Cutler, who headed the research, and Tess Clark, an expert on dummy sterilization from Milton. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very worried about this fecal bacteria already. Can you tell us a little bit more about the research which you carried out? Okay, so um, what we were interested in, because what we do is we uh, look at the existence of different types of bacteria in the environment, especially ones that could be a problem, and uh, we did a survey of uh, unused dummies and a survey of used dummies. Now, the unused dummies obviously could pick up bugs from the environment, and they did. And when the environment was dirty, uh, the unused dummy got very contaminated. We were only interested in what we call grossly contaminated specimens. That's uh, really heavy contamination. And uh, when we actually looked then at uh, the dummies that had been used by children, we, mm. funnily enough, found about the same levels of contamination and grossly contaminants. Only in this case, uh, the type of organisms has obviously changed, and the main type of bug we found was a, a thing called Enterococcus faecalis, uh, which obviously comes from faeces normally in the gut, and uh, it was uh, quite an eye-opener just how badly these uh, dummies were contaminated. One of the things we did find, and uh, that we'd like to pass across to, to parents, is that the really heavily contaminated ones tended to come from the dummies which were older, shall we say, and there was one dummy that had been in use for about nine months that was really grossly contaminated. So we would suggest yeah. perhaps it's a good idea to change the dummy, maybe every three or six months if you possibly can. Yeah. Um, one thing that certainly at my eyes, it's, it's the, uh, relatively speaking, the least bacteria was found on dummies dropped on the pavement. Yeah, well, that, nah, that's, that's perfectly OK. Don't forget these were... Uh, new dummies, completely uh, untouched by a human hand. And like everything else, I mean, we've done uh, a lot of surveys in the environment, if you look us up, and some of the environments don't have anything uh, nasty there at all. We were using specific media which pick up, um, in, you know, human pathogens. So yeah. some of the strange environmental organisms we probably wouldn't pick up. But nevertheless, it's not, it's not surprising to us that only about 10% uh, are really heavily contaminated surfaces from the environment and we did funnily enough um we did find that kitchens were not a good place to drop a dummy oh, you've got me really worried now <laughs> so tell me more about some of the nasties that you discovered and, and how harmful they are okay well as i said intracoccus faecalis is basically uh, a rather tough little organism uh, it lives in the gut and um, basically uh, it's important to man because it causes things like urinary tract infections. The other unfo unfortunate thing that it tends to do is it tends to be multiply drug resistant. Now, as you know um, from uh, the high la levels of uh, publicity that are circulating now about drug resistance in bacteria um, from the Department of Health, it is an issue for the future that we have to actually try and prepare for because uh, we've, we're rapidly... Uh, on the way to running out of um, new antibiotics. So we need yeah. to think about proper sterilisation and systems that you can actually use for sterilising. And you've already said that uh, maybe one of the worst places to drop the dummies in the kitchen. Any other bad places? Um, I wouldn't have thought in the kitchen, though. I really wouldn't have thought in the kitchen. No, neither would I. Uh, I was really surprised by that one because basically you think you know people keep their kitchen floors nice and and clean and wash them with disinfectants and everything. Obviously, in this case, unfortunately, they don't seem to be doing that. Uh, soft play areas, uh, obviously, were also another uh, issue area where... Um, yeah, the, well, there's loads of kids in yeah, there, Yeah, absolutely. There? Loads of them in absolutely. there. Absolutely. I mean, the, all, all we were saying in that is if you take a nice, clean, sterile, brand-new dummy and you drop it uh, on a surface, then don't be too surprised uh, that you pick up bacteria. But also, uh, what was surprising was the level of bugs that we could pick up from those. I mean, these things were just dropped. They weren't rubbed on the uh, the carpets or things. They were just dropped on the carpets. <laughs> I, and, uh, I, I picked up. Tess, uh, 
Yes, let me bring you in here. Um, what, what can parents do to minimise the risk to their children? Uh, well, parents just need to be aware that to, to keep their children and babies um, safe from harmful bacteria, they just need to simply sterilise their soother. Um, you know, using a portable device such as the Milton Mini Soother Steriliser, you can very quickly, easy and efficiently keep it sterile so that making sure you've always got a clean soother to hand. So if baby spits them out, which we know they can do, you know, perhaps hundreds of times a day, making sure you can reach into your sterilising pod, which could be, you know, could be attached to your buggy, give the baby the clean dummy without having to rinse it, then use the dirty one, and you can put that back in the steriliser, then you know that you've always got a clean soother there, ready, ready to go, so it gives the parents that real peace of mind, and as a mum myself, I, I know that it's horrible having a poorly baby, and no parent listening to this wants to, you know, to, to expose their baby to these harmful germs, so it really is simple, you know, keeping your hands washed and, and keeping your soother um, sterile. What about the one of one of the old methods is uh, when when the baby drops the dummy, the mum will pick it up, put it in her mouth before she puts it back in the baby. Is that recommended still or not? No, no. At, at Milton, we actually recommend sterilising the baby soother up until one year of age, just because the baby's immunity isn't fully developed until um, at least past the age, and it's actually at its lowest at six months old. So um, we would definitely recommend using a soother steriliser, um, you know, over any other method. But when you're, but when you're out and about, you can't sterilise a baby at that time. Yeah, well, the beauty of having a portable um, steriliser for soothers is that you can ju do just that. You can attach a very simple sterilising pod, which is sort of the size of a tennis ball, onto your buggy. Then you can always have a clean dummy in there. So there's no real reason why parents can't sterilise on the go. You know, we're in you know, modern days now and, and parents are looking for sort of new, quick and innovative ideas to sterilise. And, you know, here's one of them. The baby spits out, you've got a dummy... Um, then you can give it to baby and you can con constantly swap them round. I mean, I've got friends myself um, who've got parents and they've carried eight to ten dummies out with them in a day because they don't know what to do when baby spits them out. And I'm sure, you know, mum's listening to this in, in Nottingham. Have, I've been there and done that. And yeah. it's just saying, do you know what? You can sterilise on the go. It's really simple, really easy. Just have one sterile, you know, and you've always got one there f for mum. And, um, you know, if any mums have got any questions at all about the research yeah. or on how to keep their baby the soother sterile, but just general um, sort of hygiene questions, they can go to the Milton Facebook page and, and feel free to ask us any question at all because we'd be really happy to help. So what's the Facebook page? Um, it's, they can just search for Milton. That's M-I-L-T-O-N. Lovely. Thank you very much. That's uh, Dr Ronald Cutler, who headed the research and uh, Tess Clark, an expert on uh, dummy sterilisation for Milton. Thanks a lot for joining us this morning. A Thank pleasure. you. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. Nothing else.